audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. You're listening to Momentum, a show that helps men succeed in life. And as we delve into this week's topic, a reminder that some of the content may be of a sensitive nature. Now, here's your hosts, Tim and Des. It is Momentum. Welcome to this week's show. So good to have you with us. It is uh, just Tim and Des this week. And uh, Des, this is this is pretty cool. I actually really enjoy just the two of us having a show. No, no disrespect to any of the guests, but uh, it's nice for us just to have the two of us and banter around a subject this week. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, that's, it's good fun. Let me just mention our website. All previous podcasts are all on there. All useful YouTube information is all on there. The links to our own YouTube is on there. And that's MomentumAustralia.org. So uh, you can give us feedback, questions. And if you feel led to help us financially, that would be amazing. And, and also our car line is one 800 men with a 636 Guys, if you're doing life on your own and you need a safe and confidential conversation, as we say every week, uh, please reach out to that car line. It's interesting that somewhere between 50 and 60 men every month are reaching out to our car line. And that is absolutely fantastic. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned the YouTube channel, which, of course, you can find at MomentumAustralia.org. And uh, look, Momentum exists uh, to help you listening right now, to help you. Uh, Des and I have done some journeys. You know, we, we've had some stuff happen in our lives. We've learned some stuff the hard way. Certainly don't profess to be perfect and we've got it all together at all, which is why we do generally get guests on the show to talk about stuff that is relevant to people just like us and you uh, to help us, you know, just to help us to go, hey, uh, maybe we can tweak this. Maybe we can do this better. Maybe you've had this thing in your life way too long and you just want it out of your life once and for all. It, that's why we exist, to encourage you on your journey as a man, as a husband, as a father, etc., etc. And again, the Momentum Care Line exists for you to have a safe space. If you don't have a safe space, you've got a safe space with the Care Line to have one of those conversations and maybe start the ball rolling and start the journey of healing, Des, which is really important for a lot of guys too. Uh, let me just say that Tim is a lot closer to being perfect than I am. <laughs> I just thought I'd better say that right now. <laughs> I'm glad you acknowledge that, Des. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we hear a lot about in our world mm. is intentionality. Mm. What does it look like? And how can we apply it in our lives? Good question, Des. I mean, the truth is that what we just talked about there all of that takes intentionality, and that's our topic this week. So we're going to start with maybe a definition of intentionality, because again, it does get bandied around a fair bit. Um, a definition of intentionality says being intentional means being purposeful and deliberate in everything we do. It involves setting clear goals, focusing on priorities, and making conscious decisions. I mean, it's an interesting thing just to start off with in that we say we're uh, purposeful and deliberate in everything we do. Mm. What does that actually look like? Mm. It doesn't mean that you're serious all the time and you're and you're 100% focused on intentionality, whatever that looks like. Mm. It means that it, it is, you know, a, a guiding principle in your life, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the character of an individual and what an individual does, mm. it requires for that individual to have a couple of things. And one of them is obviously to have goals. You know, we, all, we talk regularly about having goals in your life. Mm. Um, alongside those are desires, things that we think we need in our lives, but also standards. So what are the template standards that we have in our lives? We need to have those. Mm. And the select behaviors that are in the service of attaining those goals. So they, they guide us. There's no point in having goals that lead us one way, mm. but our actions and our uh, desires and so forth are going another way. That's not compatible, right? Mm. I mean, let's unpack that a little bit because, I mean, that's really the foundation for all of this, right? So let, let's go back to the, the being purposeful and deliberate. I mean, w when we wake up every day, I think unless, unless we have that sense of intentionality, bigger picture, but then how does that boil down? If, unless I have a, a sense of what I want to achieve today, where I'm going today, what are the key things I need to be doing today, how I want to think today, how I want to operate, how I want to show up in life – Unless I'm intentional about thinking that way, we will default back to whatever we've always been or done. And, and as you say, you know, if you do the same things, you're going to get the same results. And I think that's really what it boils down to is, uh, is there been some thought around being purposeful and deliberate around certain areas of my life? And then what, what you said there, following back off that, having the goals, the desires, the standards – that's cool. That's the starting point. Think about it. Where do I want to go? What does that want to look like? But if I'm not matching my behaviors, my character, 
you know, who I am, how I'm showing up. If they're, they're not matching, I'm misaligned and I'm, it doesn't matter what I want, the goals that I set in place. If I don't have the character and the discipline to, and the things set in place and the habits to be able to do that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get where I potentially want to go. And then there's a deliberate choice. Uh, you, we all know the phrase learnt behavior. And our learnt behavior may be something like when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is talk to my Heavenly Father. The second thing I do is read His Word. Um, and so, I mean, they become learnt behavior and they become part of that intentionality that we have in our lives. And that changes our whole day, it changes our whole week, changes our whole life. Absolutely. Here's some thoughts about this because I think. I mean, I've just turned 50. You're a few years down the track. Oh, nice. I, I love the way you that said that. That was delicately put. Delicately put your <laughs> yeah, that was great. a little bit further down the track, just a little. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, for, for me, if I'm really honest and vulnerable, and we try and do that on Momentum, is, uh, you know, up until the age of 38, I didn't think too much about stuff. I mean, I was following what I thought was the lead of my Heavenly Father, but there was uh, still a lot of stuff in my life that I hadn't really investigated and, and wasn't being intentional about. And I, I think now at the age of 50, you know, you reach the, the milestones, the 40, the 50, the 60, and you realize that you're on the clock. And, and I think that can be the, you know, the, the midlife crisis or the wake-up call that we need to actually go, right, now I'm going to actually live with more intentionality to make use of the time that I've got less. So why is intentionality important? M- my thought is this, being intentional means making deliberate choices, right, to to it actually reflects what's important to us, right? Because when you start making those choices, when you actually sit and think about it and go, what is important to me? How do I want to spend my time? Bigger picture, what is the impact that I want to have with my life, right? And if I'm not intentional about that, I'll just drift and settle and drift and settle and oh, stuff might come along and it's okay, but I don't really have a point that I'm focused towards, Becoming intentional helps us maintain a positive mindset, reach goals, experience more clarity, be more present, uh, increases our focus and commitment, and brings more purpose and meaning to our lives. And I think that's the key thing. It brings more purpose and meaning to our lives. And, and there's a bigger picture outside that, that as well. One day, probably more for me rather than you, you know, we're going to face our Creator. Yeah. And we have to give an account of how we have served the Lord You know, over the times we've been saved. And you know, that's a real... Uh, really something that we don't talk about, mm. but it's something that we need to consider. I mean, uh, doing 100%. life well is great. Yeah. Sowing into other people's lives is great and so forth. But at the end of the day, you know, we have, we'll be accountable. Mm. When I get into uh, the men's group spaces, w- one of the things I often talk about, and we've talked about, about this before, is, is legacy. Yes. Because we often don't talk about legacy, right? And, and, for me, at the age of 50, again, I'm like, it, the sooner and the earlier and the younger you are when you work out what the call is on your life or what you're passionate about or what you feel God's leading you to if you're a Christian, the sooner you figure that stuff out, the better, because then you don't waste, in inverted commas, time. And I know that some of us have to do journeys and God can use the journeys and turn the journeys around and that's okay. But I, I'm big on people in their late teens even and early 20s going, who do you think you are right now? Like, what do you think God's calling you to? What do you love doing? What are you passionate about? What are the things that just come easy to you that would indicate that they're gifts on your life that God's given you to use? The sooner you figure that stuff out, the clearer the picture is about where you want to head and you can make more impact sooner in life. For you and I, Des, it's been a little later down the track because partly because we came to faith later, and then partly because we just didn't get our act together in time. <laughs> and so <laughs> probably more of that than the former. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really keen on 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 guys, and if you're listening, figuring out what's the legacy I want to leave and then reverse engineer that and go, right, what do I need to do or who do I need to be to be that person to leave that legacy that I want to leave? And and it's, it's three parts that as you rightly well, it's actually three parts. The two extreme parts fit into the one. So there's your, your your family life, your home life, the people you engage with. Mm. How do how do you engage with them intentionally mm. from a Christian perspective, from a faith perspective? And then there's your, your calling, whatever that is. Mm. And then those two come together to be intentional about life. Mm. All aspects of your life blend together and you serve the Lord in that way. We've got some keys we're going to look at and then we've got 
if we get time in the second part of the show days, uh, we've got some thoughts around how we can apply this stuff into every area of our, well, most areas of our lives, I think we've covered uh, or we're going to cover in the prep here. Um, and there might be something we've left out, but it'll give you just some ideas of, okay, what's the practical like working? I hear what you guys are saying. How do I practically outwork this stuff and apply this in my life? So five, five ways to practice intentionality. And number one, choose what's important to you. To act with intention in life, we first must know our values. Uh, I mean, all of this stuff then requires us to uh, sit down, be quiet for a time, and actually sit and work out what's important to us. Uh, and, and I don't know about you, but I didn't do this until later in life. You know, I kind of thought about it, but I didn't really sit down and nut down and go, actually, is that really? Is that just something that I thought was important or my parents told me was important or I'm still living off something from 20 years ago that, you know, is outdated where I'm at right now? What's actually important to me where I'm sitting right now? And also, um, you know, you might be surprised at what you write down. Yeah. Because what you think are your values may not be your values. Somebody once said somewhere, your character portrays your values mm. and, and and there's a lot of truth to that the next one of course is to seek and create environments for exercising your intentions that's so important too mm. you know and that, that that's so broad mm. i mean that is choose your friends mm. choose those people you associate with choose those people you worship with whatever that looks like you the whole environment of your life what does it look like Seek and create environments for exercising your intentions. I like that. So you're seeking them out, but also you are a part or you're bringing, you're creating that yourself. Um, yeah. Before I forget it, uh, I just want to go back a point just in case I forget to do this. I had a coach do this with me not too long ago. And it's getting back to the important thing where the first thing, which is choose what's important to you, right? I want to just say to the guys, do this. This is powerful. She did this with me and this was profound, right? Ask yourself why five times in a row. So if you go, what's important to me? What's your first answer? And then go, why? Uh Okay, why? And do that five times. You actually get down to the very, very core. And you'll understand like when you look at the first, what you thought was that, you go five times down and you really get to the core of why that thing is important or whatever it may be. And you go, oh, okay. It's it's absolutely powerful. If you do that in areas of your life five times, ask why, and you get the answer, and then ask ask why five times. Powerful. Wow, it's that's great really advice. Really profound. I just I've never done that, and and that's challenging. A challenge for me personally. I think I first heard it with Dean Grazioso, who is a famous um, kind of entrepreneur guy, uh, and I heard it with him, and she she actually did it with me. She demonstrated it to me with something I was struggling with. And and again, when I boiled down to the crux of where I went, oh, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's really <Whoops>. powerful. <laughs> okay, very quickly, so just that next one is something that guys in particular find it difficult to do. Mm. And that is to say no when something doesn't align with our values. Mm. We've talked about work-life balance, but I think if we're really honest, and even if I'm honest myself, coming into 2024, I was like, I carry too much last year. I'm trimming my life a little bit this year. And and that's going to look a little different for everybody because we've all got different scenarios and whatever. But I think if you're already sort of a third into the year or whatever, and you're going, man, like... I'm, I'm already looking forward to Christmas. I can't wait for that end of year break. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like uh, if you feel like you're constantly spinning your wheels and you just, you you know, then, you, then you've got too much on your plate. And it is important to stop and rest. And you may need to rejig your schedule and actually put in some downtime and family time and not feel guilty about it, which is a key for a lot of us. We're talking intentionality in this week's show. We're going to take a short break and uh, point you to the website, MomentumAustralia.org. Have a quick squeeze around the website. Des and I are going to come back and talk about intentionality on the other side of this break. Until then, enjoy. This is Momentum, a show that helps men succeed in life. Find out more at MomentumAustralia.org. If this program has highlighted something you'd like prayer for, we'd love to pray for you. Call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. It's a free call. Or text 0401 132 888. You're listening to Momentum, a show that helps men succeed in life. 
Find out more at MomentumAustralia.org. All righty, welcome back to this week's Momentum with uh, just Tim and Des this week. And we're talking about intentionality. MomentumAustralia.org, by the way, is our website if you'd like to have a squeeze around that after the show and find out a bit more about who we are. Uh, previous episodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But welcome back to this week, and intentionality is what we've uh, we've started talking about, Des. And um, look, this is such a key area of our life because let's be honest: when we start applying intentionality right across the board, things change, things happen. Yeah, it certainly does. And you know, when you look at intentionality in terms of what we do every day, there are five mm. things, uh, five levels uh, of intentionality that we mm. need to focus on. And the first one, of course, is what do we do? You know, are we intentional about what we do? And that affects every area of our life. What we do. Uh, number two is what we speak. And you know what? I mean, there's uh, there's all sorts of books out there about the power of your words. I mean, the Bible is very big on what you speak. Proverbs eighteen twenty one: the tongue is the power of life and death. I mean, what's coming out of your mouth? What are you speaking? Are you in, even intentional about your speech? Because a lot of us, again, are, and, and I'm guilty of this, uh, some of my stuff is very negative, predominantly about myself, actually. And my wife will catch me and go like, you know, you need to change some of that that stuff that's coming out of your mouth. I'm like, oh. Wow, you've got a good wife, man. That's really cool. I do. <laughs> yeah, she keeps me on my toes. And as, as it underlines the rest of them is, what do we believe? Yeah. What do you believe about the world around you? What do you believe about your faith? What do you believe about people you share life with? That's so key as well. Absolutely. What you believe and, of course, what you think, what's happening between the ears, Des, yeah, which is yeah. really important. Yes. And, again, we can often be our own worst critic in our heads. And we talked about that earlier in the year with uh, Richard Fay about inner critic. Have a listen to that because it is huge. Often we'll be mulling over and stuff in our heads that is so negative and toxic. And that comes out of our mouth at times or in our behaviors and patterns. Uh, and l- until we clean that up, as I say, the stinking thinking between your ears, you- you're going to have some challenges. One of the things that I, d- I don't know how I learned this or thought about it when I first became a Christian was um, the fact that the Holy Spirit, God, indwells us. Mm. And in my simple looking at my life, everything that I do, God hears. Everything I mm. see, God's mm. he's indwelling me. Everything I mm. think, he knows. Everything I feel, he knows. And so mm. that in itself should guide us to live a totally different life. Now, the next one is about marriage. Mm. And since oh. I am not married, I need to leave that one to you to talk about. <laughs> nice handball. <laughs> I like to see what you did there. Well, look, I mean, this is generic things, and it's, it's, none of this is difficult. It, it's, just, it, it's just thought and intentionality. Ma- making our spouse a, a priority, making our marriage a priority, making time to connect daily. Um, you know, initiating regular date nights. When was the last time you took your wife out? That's so important. You know, without her organizing it or without it being a dual thing. You maybe just surprised her and said, hey, darling, be home by whatever tonight or be ready by whatever and um, the rest is up to me. I've got I've got some plans. Uh, regular date nights. No one expressing their love language. Do you know what speaks to her heart? Are you doing that on a regular basis? Do you know her love language even? What 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 is the way that communicates your love to her in a way that she receives? What am I doing on a daily basis? Am I writing little notes? Am I doing flowers once a week? Am I, I don't know, whatever it may be. Just, you know, do I go up and show physical affection, you know, just off the cuff? Uh, When was the last time I genuinely told her that I loved her, you know, for no other reason, for doing nothing else, just to say, you know what, I, I think you're amazing and I love you. Like, just, am I being intentional with that? Am I sowing little things into my marriage um, on a daily basis? On a daily basis, because you never know the impact that will have in your in your partner's life, and like kind of an amazing impact. Well, uh, somebody always said like, and and it stuck with me. It's like when you you make little deposits into a bank account. Yeah. Over a period of time, you don't put a huge chunk in. Often, it's you know little drips and drabs here and there, but over the course of whatever, it builds up to this account. And it, it's if you just make little deposits into your marriage and into your spouse every single day that's going to fill the love tank back up and then guys when you when you're looking for the the main prize and we all know what i'm talking about here you're more likely to get it because you're not just expecting the main prize without actually having done some some work in the in the the, the lead up to yeah and just on that topic you know can i suggest on that issue go back and listen to the podcast from Brian andrew and he <laughs> and he talked clear and plain about that yes. aspect of your know, marriage 
And the next one, of course, is a natural byproduct of marriage, which is we're parents. And so yes. I mean, do we take time for our kids? I, mean, I had the most amazing dad, but I still remember on a Saturday night, he'd come back, he'd been working all day, he'd come back, I'd be in the backyard kicking a football, and I would say, mm. Dad, we kick a football with me? And he was just too tired. Now, I'm not judging my dad in any way because he was a wonderful father, but it's amazing how those little things stay in your mind. And so be present, be active with your children, do small things with them, have date mm. nights with your daughter, go fishing mm. with your son, whatever it looks like, you know, and be consistent, have that connection, yeah. be a friend to your, your children. I think another thing, Des, as well, and it, it, this is not necessarily a big time thing, but just take an interest in what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, I, with, with my daughter, for example, I, I had to learn about uh, Korean boy bands uh, for a season because she was into BTS and Korean music. And I, I mean, this was not an interest to me, but I took an interest because it was important to her. Uh, and these are things you can do, like, for example, when you're chatting in the car on the way to school or the school drop off, pick up, whatever it may be, or your extracurricular stuff, you've got 15 minutes in the car, you know, taking extra time to put your kids to bed, pray with them, talk to them. Uh, if you're doing some of the chores around the house together, you know, it's an opportunity for you just to engage in a bit of conversation and go, how was school? You know, what's happening? Hey, how's that How's that thing going that you're doing for school? Or how's your basketball coming along? I don't know, whatever it is, but show an interest in your kids' lives. Yeah, why, why don't you come and help me make dinner? <laughs> it, could be, it could be anything. We'll rush yeah. through the last few because they, they are important. One of them is our, our friendships. So you've got your family, you've got your kids, then you've got your friends. Choose your friends wisely. Choose your friends deliberately. Choose your friends that will sow into your world uh, and will help you grow as a Christian person. So this is, uh, I'm going to quickly just bounce off that, Des, and say this is actually one of my biggest bugbears in life um, with with friends because we are all, and I'm going to get my phone, hold on, we are all super attached (laughs) to these things, right? And we all have these things in our hands a lot more than we would probably like to admit. uh, And yet we don't often use them for wow, connection, that's a good point. for true connection. Uh, and, and you know, honestly, we can sit read or unread for weeks with someone who we considered a friend and go, like, are they, uh, well, are they getting back to me? Like, uh, how long do I wait for a response? Uh, and this is where, you know, for guys as well, if we don't initiate and take responsibility for that, we can do life on our own for a long, long time if we're waiting for someone to reach out to us. I'm encouraging you to take initiative and being intentional with your friendships. And then when you actually get a coffee or a lunch or just a whatever it is that you do, um, yeah. be intentional with your conversation. Yeah. Don't just sit surface. Go, hey, man, like you mentioned last time something, uh, it's kind of been bugging me. Uh, how's things? Are you okay? Is everything, can I pray for you? Like, is there anything I can do for you? It, being intentional with those conversations. And that I get is vulnerable and it's tricky, but that's really the depth of friendships that's going to carry you through life when people actually know who you are, what's happening, rather than just see the veneer that they th- that you think is you know the perfect show when the <laughs> thing is falling down behind the scenes. Like, let's not do that, you know? Let's not do that. And, you know, the next the next one is in our workplace. And I'm reminded of Richard Fay. We, we talked to Richard Fay about work-life balance. And, it, and what he said was he made a deliberate decision that at 5 o'clock, he was switching off. And I think that's a mm. good message, a lesson I never mm. learned when I was in the corporate world. But it is so important to get home and time for your kids and so forth and to have that balance between work and home life. Very important. Showing up in your work, um, are you committed? Do you uh, have a desire to improve? Are you a team, team player? Do you go above and beyond but still have healthy boundaries? That's all good stuff, Des. Finances, just quickly, realistic goals. You know, have you, Do you have realistic goals? Do you have any goals? Do you set a plan? Have you made a budget? There's many people that don't even have a budget. you got to live within your means. you got to pay your bills on time. You know, Stay focused. Reduce unnecessary spending. And if you are a Christian, make sure that you're tithing. That's always a good starting point in your finances. Let's jump down to quickly, days because we are running out of time. Just want to quickly touch on health and mental health. Health, you know, don't have to be killing yourself in the gym, but are you, are you, are you intentional with your health? Do you get out? Do you walk? Do you move it uh, regularly? Are you thinking about what you're putting down your throat, what you're drinking? Are you staying hydrated? Do you limit alcohol? Do you take supplements if necessary? Do you try and get good sleep? You know, um, if you're not particularly motivated, can you find someone and, and link up with someone to get some motivation and accountability? And of course, how you 
how you feel about your 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 exercise is going to impact your mental health days. Yeah, for sure. And and every area of life, mental health is such a huge issue. I, I talked to a lady yesterday yeah. working uh, with youth between twenty uh, mm. thirteen and twenty five, and I mean, some her of her insightfulness mm. was amazing. It's a huge, huge issue, and something that we as men and we as Christian men need to think long and hard about so that we don't deal into anxiety and depression and so forth. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's about it for this week's show on intentionality with uh, Tim and Des. I encourage you to uh, go back and have a listen uh, to this at the website, MomentumAustralia.org. And of course, Des, if uh, somebody needs a, a chat or to explore this a little bit more, what do you recommend? I recommend, uh, well, a few things. I recommend going to our website because all our podcasts are all on there. And so you can re-listen to this conversation. Uh, and, and also don't forget, guys, don't do life on your own. If you need a safe and confidential conversation, 1-800-000-MEN between 7 a.m., 9 p.m., 11 p.m., seven days a week. So that's really cool that you can reach out to them. And, and, and you can also contact us, help at MomentumAustralia.org as well. Don't do life in isolation. If there's something you need to chat about, call the care line, 1-800-000-MEN. Reach out to us at MomentumAustralia.org. And until next time, you look after yourselves. Take care. God bless. You've been listening to Momentum, a show that helps men succeed in life. For more information or to hear this week's show again, go to MomentumAustralia.org. You can also access a whole range of resources to help you on your journey and to get in touch with the team at MomentumAustralia.org. Until next time, keep moving forward with Momentum. Momentum.